All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I'm trying to answer probably one of the most commonly asked questions from me, from both what I see in YouTube comments and while I'm actually doing consulting. And that is, there are so many options to back up my NAS. How should I back up my Synology NAS? And in this video, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of pretty much every single one of them that is out there. And so in this, we're not gonna be limited to just truly backup applications, but we're going to be talking about every single way that people perceive is being backed up versus how is really being backed up. And it's all gonna be about how to back up your personal Synology NAS to another cloud, NAS, hard drive, anything. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today in this video because there's a lot of them. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Synology DSM right here. And I've kind of pulled out and installed everything on my test bed right here everything that is generally thought of as a backup or anything. And the first one we're gonna go into is Storage Manager because Storage Manager has RAID settings underneath it. And a lot of people perceive RAID as a backup. RAID is not a backup. RAID is nice. Redundant RAID allows you to lose a disk or multiple disks and still retain all of your data. But it is redundancy, not a backup. A backup should save you from not just hardware failure, but also software failure. And that is not the case in a RAID. In a RAID, if a volume crashes, if somebody hacks into the NAS and corrupts the files or encrypts them and demands ransomware, or the NAS itself fails, it will write all of those changes to both drives. Therefore, your backup that was never a backup also has the exact issue as the primary disk. RAID is not a backup. All right, and so now we'll actually go into some things that are much more backups because they're sending your data to another system in some case. And I just wanna go at a really high level here and talk about which ones there are, which I'm just, ones I'm gonna be mostly focusing on because there are some honorable mentions that people ask about. And then there are the three really big ones that I use all the time. I'll even give you four now that Synology Active Backup for Business for DSM has come out. So the by far the most commonly asked ones are about USB copy. USB copy allows you to very easily copy the contents of your NAS to a USB drive, which is a backup. Then there is hyper backup. This is going to be the by far the most backup application and it is designed for what's called disaster recovery. There are kind of two different fields of backups. There are the backups that are designed to get you up and running instantaneously with minimum downtime and there are the backups that are designed to have disaster recovery. That means everything in the world can go wrong and you should still retain your data in your backup. Hyper backup is all about disaster recovery. It is designed to survive whatever you throw at it. Hyper backup is going to be by far the most resilient to anything going wrong. Then we can go all the way down into snapshot replication. Snapshots themselves are not a backup, but the replication is in fact a backup where it is on the opposite scale of hyper backup, where it is really focusing on minimal downtime. So we'll talk about that. Then now there is active backup for business for DSM, which allows you to do a bare metal restore and a bare metal backup of any given NAS. That is going to be half disaster recovery, but also really half getting people up and running. And it's really kind of designed for large corporations. Then finally, we can come down to Synology Drive Share Sync where it is a backup in a sense. It allows you to sync the file system on two different NASes. So a change in one goes to the other immediately. And this is great for multi-site locations. It is a backup, but is not a perfect one. I still do use it and I do deploy it for clients because having the ability to have your backup be a online file system that you can still work from is so advantageous that a lot of times I do do it. The one time, if I am gonna set this up as a backup for a client, I will always turn on snapshots on it, just in case anything happens to one of the file systems, it'll still work. And then finally, there is Cloud Sync right here. If I had to put Cloud Sync on the spectrum between designed to get you back up and running instantaneously and disaster recovery, it's gonna be closer to getting you back up and running instantaneously because it allows you to sync your file system up to like Google Drive and so if the NAS failed, you could just start pointing everybody to Google Drive and get working quickly. But it is not something I would recommend for a mission critical backup because there are some weird issues with it that I found and it does not sync everything guaranteed. But those are all the different 
options you've got for backing up a NAS. And so that is why this happens so often where people are like, hey, is this a backup? There's so many different options here. And so my goal for this is to talk about them. And I'm just gonna fly through the beginning ones and when you should and should not use them. Then at the end, I'm gonna talk about the four ones that you should use for given use cases. So the first one we're just gonna quickly talk about is USB copy. USB copy is very simple. It allows you to set up a task where every time a hard drive is plugged into the Synology NAS, it backs up the entire contents of any folder you choose to that device one for one. And this is a great backup for people who are not super tech savvy and just need to make sure that their files are on that hard drive. And that is what I deploy it for a lot. It's generally less sophisticated companies who have a NAS and they rely on it heavily, but they need to be able to physically have it in their hands and physically see it. So what I'll do is I'll set up a USB copy task. They plug it in, it automatically copies the contents of the NAS to the USB drive, and then it automatically ejects it. And it will go beep to let them know it's done. Very, very, very simple. And I would highly recommend formatting it for XFAT because if you format the hard drive for XFAT, then when you plug it into a computer, Windows or Mac, boom, now you can read all the contents for it. Just super easy, your files are there, you're up and running immediately. It is not gonna be disaster recovery though. There could be a glitch in it, it is not a perfect system, you don't get previous versions of files, though it is a very good way to start an offline backup, and offline backups can be so great if you're gonna keep up with them. An offline backup is great because it never can get hacked unless you plug it in. And so if you have an offline backup of your NAS and the worst vulnerability is dis discovered within Synology DSM that allows anybody to get full admin privileges and do whatever they want, they're not gonna be able to do anything to that hard drive if it's in your desk, not plugged in. And so that's where it's nice for companies like that who just want a very simple backup solution and don't need all these fancy features and things. But it's not gonna protect you if you need to roll back because it does not have the capability. Generally, it's a one-to-one -one copy. Now, if you stick snapshots on top of that, it can be a pretty decent backup and it will get you at least good enough. And so that's generally how I will deploy it. Then onto Cloud Sync. So Cloud Sync allows you to take the file system of your NAS and sync it to any of these devices. You've got Backblaze, Google Drive, Dropbox, you name it, it's on here. And it can even be extended with WebDAV. You can figure out how to send your files to pretty much any web server there is out there. Now that being said, this is not a perfect backup solution because it's got a really big issue. One, file names that are too long or take some Unix characters that are legal characters in the file system, but because it's gotta work on all these cloud providers, doesn't always work, it will not back up those files silently. And so that's why it should not be considered a backup if at all possible. For simple file systems, it can work. Another huge issue with it for a true backup is if you move a folder, say you move a one terabyte folder or literally just rename a one terabyte folder, it now goes, whoa, they deleted the old folder, they created this new folder, well, let's go ahead and delete the old folder and then upload this new folder with this new name. Oh wait, they might have the same contents. It doesn't check, it doesn't care, it doesn't know to do that because it is just a sync. And so if you do that, you will have to re-upload all one terabytes of those files. For me, would not be a big deal. Google Fiber is awesome but for the vast majority of Americans and international users as well, that is going to be a huge issue. And so I very rarely recommend using Cloud Sync. It's great for backing up other cloud providers. Say you wanna have a backup of your Google Drive, just in case you need to leave it, just in case you want to access an old version of file, that is a great thing you can do. But I would not recommend using it as a true backup. And so that goes through the kind of more basic backups that are not really backups though can use for certain workflows. Now let's talk about by far the best backup option you've got for Synology NAS and that is going to be Hyper Backup. Hyper Backup is a tank and you'll notice pretty much all my backup videos rely on Hyper Backup 
because Hyper Backup is written incredibly well. There are really kind of two issues with Hyper Backup, however. One, it doesn't necessarily back up to every single server out there. It does work on any S3 server, so a lot of times you can find something that'll work with that. So that's at least overcomable. But it also does not allow you to see your files in the cloud, which is unfortunate for a lot of people. The only cloud that is able to see Hyper Backup files is Synology C2. I personally pay for Synology C2 myself, and I've deployed it for a ton of clients because I'll be honest with you, they've integrated it really well, it's priced pretty decently, and it just is bulletproof. And so Hyper Backup is great for that. I often will also set up Hyper Backup to backup to another NAS, and so that way you can also see the contents of the files on that NAS as well. But it is not designed to get you up and running instantaneously. Hyper Backup deploys this .hbk file that is basically a ton of old versions of all your files in its own proprietary format. Now a Synology NAS will be able to look through that file and see incredibly old versions of files and be able to restore from specific times and so many things like that. But it's not instantaneous. You can download everything onesies, twosies from it, so that is good. But if you're in a situation where you have a very busy Office file server and that file server goes down, Hyper Backup is going to take a while and you could be out of work, depending on how fast your internet connection is, for a couple of days. And so that's why it's very important to have a 321 backup solution. I'm not gonna talk about that here. Essentially what it is, is three total copies of your data, two of them on-site, one of them off-site. In the past, it was with two different media types. That's not really necessarily true anymore. I would change that to be, instead of two different media types, where it was supposed to be like, one on tape, one on a hard drive. Just have it on two different methods. So something like a disaster recovery and a high availability setup. And so really quick, I am gonna be doing a video on this at one point. My ideal three, two, one solution for a business is snapshot replication in between two on-site file systems, Synology NASes, and then the main gets backed up to a hyper backup destination which is another offsite NAS. I deployed that for a few different businesses and they're tanks, they're awesome. I will be doing a video on that, so get subscribed. But Hyper Backup is designed for that offsite, mission critical, it goes down, you can guarantee to get all your files back, which is what it's used for and why every single home user should have something running in Hyper Backup, in my opinion. All right, so now let's go on to the exact opposite side of things and that is going to be our snapshot replication. Snapshot replication is a backup in the sense that it's duplicating your data and putting on something else unless you get back up and running instantaneously. So you've probably seen numerous of my videos about snapshots if you've watched this channel before. They're unbelievable. BTRFS snapshots are like one of the greatest things ever. Replication takes that a step further. Replication allows you to take two synologies and essentially sync them as a primary and a secondary. Any change to the primary NAS will be sent over to the secondary on a up to, I think, a five minute increment. I think on other units, it can even be a one minute increment. And that second unit has a read-only copy of the entire file system. Then if the primary goes down, you can hit failover, switch everybody to the secondary, and get back up and running with one to five minutes of downtime. It is so cool and allows you to just switch everybody over so quickly. All it takes is a DNS record change and a click button of failover. So I use that for a three, two, one backup solution in offices because businesses who have crucial file systems need to be able to get back up and running from whatever happens instantaneously. And that is what this allows you to do. Snapshot replication is not necessarily a super great backup though. If you're looking for a backup for disaster recovery, it is not the really clean version of being able to look through previous versions of files, though it can still help you from corrupting data or a virus that goes through and encrypts the entire NAS. It can help you from that, but it's not a true, true, true backup. I'll take it any day, but if the client has a budget, I would say between having a hyper backup destination or a single snapshot replication destination, I do always recommend the hyper backup destination unless downtime is deadly for the company. 
That's the only time I ever do it because it's just so much better to have hyper backup and just know whatever happens, you can just go back in time and see everything a lot cleaner than snapshot replication. All right, and so now on to active backup for business. This previously was not a way to back up your NAS until the new DSM 7.1 came out. And this allows you to actually active backup for business your entire NAS. That is what's called a bare metal restore. Effectively, what that means is you can install active backup for business agent on a Synology like this, probably unit just like this, a little two bay, probably at a satellite office and have it every night back up entirely to the primary NAS. Now it will be a Delta backup, which means the only time you ever send all the data is the very first time. And then from there, you just sync send over what's changed. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to redeploy that NAS exactly how it was without any other configuration. You just hit, okay, redeploy. And that is where the value of active backup for businesses is just no configuration required. It backs everything up, but it's a lot less efficient. Hyper backup will be more efficient for you if you're trying to just back up the files. But if you're a company who's looking for middle ground between disaster recovery, as well as getting it back up and running very quickly, active backup for business is going to be a good thing to look at because it also will support a lot more advanced features. And it's really designed if you've got 15 NASAs you need to back up, active backup for business starts to look a lot better because you don't care how the local things are configured you know everything on that NAS will be totally backed up and that's crucial. All right, and so now we will go on to the last one that I would consider for a lot of people and it's gonna be Synology Drive Share Sync. Synology Drive Share Sync allows you to take two NASs and sync them over the internet. This is great for smaller businesses that don't have a large budget or even home users who convince their friend like, hey, we'll sync this file system so we can work and then we'll both have a copy of the data in case anything happens. It is great for having a very, very simple setup and it's dual purpose. It's a backup, but also an active file system. Because it's dual purpose, it's not a great disaster recovery because if something goes wrong, you can't guarantee that everything's gonna get sent over properly, but it is good in a pinch. I would not necessarily recommend this if you have a large budget and you can afford a dedicated offsite backup using hyper backup, but for a low budget, starter backup, it is solid. Just make sure if you're gonna deploy this to have snapshots on both the units. That way, if somebody gets a virus or anything bad happens, hopefully the snapshot should allow you to roll back to a safe state. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. So I just wanna summarize this right here. I would really recommend looking in between the last four ones I mentioned. If you are looking for a disaster recovery backup, which most users should be doing, you're gonna to wanna to use hyper backup to back up everything you need. Then if you're in office and downtime is going to be deadly to you, really have a snapshot replication setup. That allows you to have two file systems, a primary and a replicated version that allows you to get back up and running within minutes. It is great for that and means that you do not lose significant productivity time and can fail everybody over. They're great setups, but should not be considered the last backup. You need a disaster recovery if you're gonna be setting that up. Finally, if you're a massive enterprise setup, you should hire me. And two, you should also want to go through and active backup for business client for DSM can be great if you just need to be able to make sure that all these satellite offices are able to have their entire file systems backed up and the entire NAS configuration backed up, all without really worrying about everything that's going on. Changes from having the backup destination being like the destination to having active backup for business, the backup destination is also the one controlling the backups. So it's a great way to have the primary office IT department backing up everybody else's NASs and not really requiring any custom configuration on the end NASs. And so it's gonna be less storage efficient in some cases, but it's easily worth it if you've got a massive amount of NASes that just need to be redeployed if anything happens. And with global deduplication, which should be coming, it will also be a lot more storage efficient 
if you've got a lot of NASs that have the exact same files on them. And so for large deployments, it makes a ton of sense. Finally, the least backup version of the ones I'm recommending here is gonna be Synology Drive Sync. It's very similar to how snapshot replication works, but it does not have that really clean, this one's the active, this one's the replicated. Instead, it's both file systems can change anything. And so if a virus happens to one of them, it is going to probably take out, at least for a period of time, the other NAS as well. And so that is one thing to think about. If you have snapshot, you should still be able to roll back. And that's why I always set up snapshots, well, with everybody, but also specifically in those cases, just in case. But it's great in a pinch and allows you to have two different NASs have all the same files on it. So you get one, ability to have both offices use low bandwidth access to files, and two, a form of redundancy. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I guess really it's an overview of all the backup options. If you wanna hire me for your business or personal use, there's a link for that in the description. And leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.